Now at this point, you should have a fairly firm grasp on the files that are in our project right now and what models, controllers, and migrations are for. If not, please go back and review those videos before going any further. Now we're ready to actually build out our database. So we're going to do that using the migrations. We have our newly created migrations here within the migration file. We're going to start with the customer's migration. And remember, we're just keeping this simple. We want to create two fields within that table. Now the code that's here right now is already set up to create the tables. We only have to worry about the columns, which is nice. We have table increments and table timestamps as well being there by default. Now the increments is what will increment the ID uh, property, the ID field automatically whenever a new customer is created. So that's handy. Uh, the timestamps method will also create a uh, created at and an updated at field in our database. So that's pretty standard. If you've worked with Laravel uh, before, for example, we typically get that right at the beginning as well. Now the two fields that I want to add are for name and description for customers. So this kind of gives me a hint, this syntax kind of gives me a hint where I need to be looking within the connects documentation. So I'm going to jump over to connects, have it somewhere right here. And you'll want to scroll uh, scroll down to the schema builder section right there and you'll see that we have uh, let's see if I can open that there we go uh, increments and timestamps so let's see if I can find that I believe it's right here in this section yeah increments so I kind of know I'm in the right place right now I want to create a name and if you have any familiarity with uh, SQL or MySQL uh, you'll know that there are different types for every field. Uh, in this case, we want a string field, a, a field with a string type. So I'll find the string right here. Uh, my eyes don't work so well today. There we go. String, and this is the syntax I use to create a string. Now, pro tip, always read the comments. I've made this mistake more than once where I don't bother reading the comments and I either miss important things or I do unnecessary work. So take the few seconds to read the comments uh, below something like this and it'll help you out a lot. So table string name and length. The square brackets there tell me that length is optional and uh, the default length is 255 with uh, characters which should be just fine. So what I will do is I will add another line here for tables string and I have to put the name of the string that I want and so in this case not very good at my tab alt tab today uh, name and I want to add another field for description now description probably going to be a lot longer than 255 characters so I'm not going to use the string type uh, I will probably use something like text so I'll use text I'll jump to that there we go um, and it follows pretty much the same format, it's just table text and the name. The text type is also optional. Uh, if you want to deep dive into these different types, then you can hop over to the MySQL documentation. And uh, it's not for the faint of heart. There's a lot in there. So try not to get lost in the weeds and let's keep going. So we'll do the text type here and description. And that's it. Um, now let's move on to project. This gets a little bit different because recall with a project table we have to or each entry in the project table we have to refer to the customer that owns that project so I can cheat a little bit and copy this work because I want to use name and description for the projects as well I try to keep them consistent so I know that on one table it doesn't say description and then another it's actually DESC or some short form like that uh, also, you want to try and use terms that make sense for your for your domain. So if your company doesn't call customers a customer, but instead a client, then you'll want to have a client's table, not a customer's table. Um, projects might be jobs. So you don't want to call your table projects, you want to call it jobs. Try to use terms that make sense for where you're working. Now, to make a reference from the project table or the project entry, to the customer, I need what's called a foreign key. And to figure out how to do that, I'll look for the foreign syntax right here. And you can find a nice example right there. So I'm going to take the middle part right here. If I can highlight properly. There we go. 
bring that over here, go to my project schema and paste that in. Now my foreign key will be a customer ID, not a user ID. And that will be unsigned, meaning it can, it can increment as high as necessary. This will be an integer type, and it will also be a foreign key, customer ID, and it will reference on the customers table, make sure this right here matches that, match, matches the table name. The example showed it as a capital I. You wanna make sure that it's lowercase matching the table name and it's plural. Those are mistakes I've made numerous times. So customers, and that will reference the ID column on the customers table. And that's it. No, actually I lied, it's not it. There's one more thing, again, Taking my own advice here, reading the full com uh, comment, I see that I can also chain a method on it for on delete. Now the projects are owned by a customer. So what happens when I delete that customer? What happens to the projects that he or she owns? I need to set that up so that the database knows what to do. Uh, by default, I believe it's no action, but for our purposes, I want to cascade, which means that when I delete a customer, the projects assigned to that customer will also be deleted. Now, going forward, when you're doing something for real use, you might wanna do something called a soft delete, where things aren't really deleted, they're just kind of hidden from view until you deliberately access them. Uh, but for now, we'll just delete it outright because this is just a project to get familiar with Adonis. So to chain that, I do on delete and cascade as my option. And that's it right there. So instead of copying it this time and going to the task table and doing the same, I'm gonna rewrite it, help commit it to memory. Uh, let me see, I'll open tasks. Let's see if I can remember. Table, I want a string for the name and the default 255 characters is just fine. Then I wanna create a text field for description. Next, I have to add an integer field for project ID. And this will be unsigned, meaning it can increment as high as, uh, high as necessary. Uh, foreign key, this will be project ID, that will be the foreign key. And it will reference, references, uh, let's see, it references the no, projects table ID. And on delete, I want to cascade. So when I delete tasks, or sorry, when I delete projects, I want all the tasks in that project to also disappear. All right, so I'm gonna double check, make sure I did that properly. Projects, integer, unsigned, integer, unsigned, looks good. Go back and forth just to see. Foreign references on delete, yeah, I got the same. Project ID, projects ID, cascade. All right, looks pretty good. So to test this out, I'm going to run my migrations again and check with MySQL Workbench to see that everything went through okay. So make sure that's saved. I go down here, Adonis, migration run. Now, sometimes when I've done this, I've had a couple of errors and they seem to pop up frequently. Uh, one of the errors will say something about a foreign key constraint. This happens to me when uh, I'm creating my tables in the wrong order. So for example, I've tried to create my project table before my customer table. I can't do that since the project has to reference a customer. And if the customer table doesn't exist, I can't set up that reference. So make sure that your migrations are set up in the proper order. Resist the urge to change the, the number values here to get them to show up in the different order. If you do that, uh, it's very easy to kind of forget that you've done that and screw up future stuff. If you're just playing around like we are right now, it's not so bad, but uh, try and plan your migrations ahead of time so you get them in the right order in the first place. Uh, the other error that I've seen often is that I'm trying to create a table that already exists. And that happens when I roll back a migration or I change things around and there's still a table left in my database. It hasn't rolled back properly. And uh, of course, when I go to try and recreate it, it's already there. So it's a good idea to go to your workbench or whatever tool that you're using and make sure that you do in fact have an empty database. So I'm going to refresh. I don't see any other tables there, which is good. So I'm pretty confident that when I run this, it will go off without a hitch. 
And I'm glad that happened. <laughs> so uh, that's it. If you have any questions about this, as always, leave a comment down below the video. Please give it a thumbs up and a like um, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, I'd just love to hear if you just enjoyed it. It doesn't have to be a problem. Just a great, uh, just a comment down below to say that this helped you out would be, would be awesome. Uh, that's it. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video.